There's two words that are important and the key to success for any superstar trio, big three, or super team in NBA history. Sacrifice and roles. When looking back in NBA history, every successful big three has needed one player to take a step back and enter a supporting role rather than the role of a primary player or scorer. Clay Thompson did it in Golden State. James Worthy did so on the 80s Lakers. Chris Bosh did it in Miami and Manu Ginobili played the sixth man role with the San Antonio Spurs. There's also a certain guy who has been the current talk of the NBA lately who began his career in the same role as Ginobili. In terms of roles in general, these are critical for any big three team to win a championship. The KD era Warriors had Curry and KD as the primary scorers and ball handlers, Klay Thompson as the premier catch and shoot guy, and Draymond as the glue guy and bully down low. The 2016 Cavaliers had LeBron doing a little bit of everything like he always does with every team he plays for, Kyrie serving as the other primary scorer and ball handler alongside LeBron, J.R. Smith as the catch and shoot player, and Kevin Love who was once a physical force down low with the Minnesota Timberwolves who took a step back and did whatever the team needed of him, whether it was stretch the floor and shoot, grab rebounds, facilitate and move the ball, or play defense. Those two things have been a necessary trait of every championship team with multiple superstars in NBA history. The game has changed very much over the years, so it seems like those two teams are very good examples to look at. But nevertheless, sacrifice and distinct roles always have and always may be necessary to win a Larry O'Brien trophy. So with the recent news that the trade to send James Harden to the Brooklyn Nets is now completed and official, I gotta ask. Just who on that team will sacrifice their stats, and just what roles will the players on this Nets roster have now? What's going on guys, SCJ here back with another video, and I have thought about making this video for a few days now and held off, but with some of the predictions and talks about this new Nets team getting crazy now, I felt like talking about the reasons why this superstar trio in Brooklyn just might fail. If you're new to the channel though, or you want to see more content like this one or my other breakdowns, make sure you hit that subscribe button, notification bell, and the like button if you enjoyed this video as well. After starting the season 2-0 and getting two impressive blowout wins, the Nets came out a bit flat against the Charlotte Hornets in just their third game of the season, and their struggles immediately began just three games in when Spencer Dinwiddie suffered a partially torn ACL in that same game against the Hornets. The team never looked the same following Dinwiddie's injury. Kevin Durant had to quarantine after contact tracing the COVID-19 virus. Kyrie Irving began to sit games out for personal reasons, and the team would go 4-6 and six over that following 10-game stretch. Then the inevitable happened on Wednesday, January 13th, just hours after Sham Sharania and Adrian Wojnarowski reported on the Rockets accelerating a James Harden trade after his comments in a post-game interview the night prior. A form team trade between the Nets, Pacers, Rockets, and Cavaliers went through, which now makes James Harden a member of the Brooklyn Nets. The Nets have quite literally mortgaged the future of their franchise to win the first NBA championship in Nets history by giving up two young blossoming players four first round picks and four future pick swaps. This feels like the Pierce, Garnett and Terry trade all over again, mixed with the Rockets trading for James Harden to put next to Clyde Drexler and Akeem Olajuwon. Ironically enough, Harden did the same thing as Chuck wanted by gaining weight in an attempt to get out of playing for a particular team. So now that three of the most prolific scorers in NBA history will all be wearing the same jersey, what exactly will this team look like? Well, this will either be the greatest basketball any of us have ever gotten the privilege of watching, or will be the Charles Barkley Rockets or Dwight Howard Lakers situations all over again. Yikes. Yesterday, James Harden said the Nets' new big three are all unselfish, all willing passers, and are guys who play basketball the right way. It's one thing to say it, but it's another thing to actually do it. These men are all great players, and if you add together their current points per game totals for this season, this is the highest scoring big three in all of NBA history. So that begs the question, which one of these three players will sacrifice their stats and or their role? KD bought into the Warriors' unselfish team back in 2016, but he was still the team's primary scoring option, and while he is an unselfish player, he didn't need to sacrifice much. Plus, it's evident he joined the Brooklyn Nets to be a leader and to have his own team. So will he really want to be the one to take a step back and sacrifice? Harden and Kyrie are... I already had this video exported last night and ready to upload this morning, but after Harden's impressive performance last night, I'm going to change or add in some stuff about both him and Kyrie and their roles on this new Nets team. Harden had a triple-double in his Nets debut last night against the Magic, for all of you not aware. 
He ended the night with 32 points on 8 for 18 shooting, along with 14 assists, 12 rebounds, 1 block, and 4 steals. In the original audio I recorded for this part of the video, I touched on how Harden mentioned how his passing and facilitating is essential for the Nets' success in his introductory press conference, and as much as you'd most likely rather have Harden scoring the basketball, his passing was off the charts against the Magic in his Nets debut last night, and having him act as the primary facilitator for this Nets team will most likely be the role for him that'll help the Nets succeed the most. Of course, the Nets had no Kyrie Irving though last night, so for everyone flipping out about how good the Nets look, it's important to remember you still need to fit Kyrie in on this new Nets team. I'm sure that's a good problem for the guys to have with the Nets three best players all being tight and having a good relationship off the court, but with Irving being a player who typically likes the ball in his hands and also has a high usage rate, it feels like either him or Harda will need to take a step back in terms of scoring the ball and undergo a role change, especially because Harden also has a very high usage rate, as well as now being a part of the two big threes with the highest usage rate in NBA history. Maybe both men take a step back offensively rather than just one guy, but with how good Harden and KD look together, it feels as if Kyrie will be the man playing the third wheel role, and you have to hope he's okay with that if you're the Nets. Maybe and hopefully this team will be similar to the Golden State teams from the second half of last decade where everyone leaves their ego at the door and makes the necessary sacrifices, but with KD being the only player who's versatile enough to contribute in many different roles, the Nets will have to hope that the off-the-court relationship of these men is good enough to make sure this three-way partnership is successful. Or do we see the Nets influence yet another change to the game in NBA history? The NBA has continued to change and adapt following the rise of the 2014-15 Warriors and Steph Curry. But with the fact that the teams won't be able to throw double teams and defensive schemes at Harden anymore like they typically do without getting burnt by one of the Nets' other players, do we see the Nets in sight yet another change to the way the game is played by them quite literally just winning games by outdoing teams with how powerful their offense is or just by out-talenting them? Nobody can really say as of right now, but we have never seen a big three like this one in the history of the NBA. I will say this, the times we've seen teams as talented as this current Nets team fail, it's mostly been because the players were at the end of their prime or no longer in their prime at all. Old age and injuries plagued the Rockets trio of Barkley, Olajuwon, and Drexler. Age and roster not fitting together hurt the big three of Kobe, Nash, and Dwight, and Carmelo Anthony entered the end of his prime upon teaming up with Russell Westbrook and Paul George. So this leads me to beg the question, despite there never being a team in NBA history that has won a title without one player sacrificing their numbers, their role, or taking a back seat, will we see this Brooklyn Nets team change that, or will the trend remain the same? No one can say as of right now, but I'll leave you with this. If this Nets big three fails, it'll come down to egos, no sacrifices, and the roster fit not being there. Without playing a single game together, this new Nets big three has already made NBA history. Now it seems things will come down to who will be the selfless player that makes the necessary sacrifices in order to help this Nets team win the franchise's first championship in NBA history.